Hört man das jetzt? Okay. Ja, ähm, ich werde einen Vortrag auf Englisch halten. Ich hoffe, das ist okay für euch, aber ihr könnt auch gerne Fragen in Deutsch stellen. Das ist ja kein Thema, ja? Aber damit erreichen wir ein paar mehr Leute. So, I will switch to English. I will do the presentation in English. And uh, the idea of today is that we would like to give you some sort of awareness of, you know, hydrogen as a very promising element and uh, component of a greener future, if you want, and uh, how that, how calibration may impact and also will contribute to a safe use of hydrogen. So hydrogen is not something new, although we are all, you know, reading a lot of that in the news and it's kind of getting, having a high moment. But the truth is that we have been dealing for centuries with this. And so are we in a hurry? Can, can we wait? What is triggering this, I would say, kind of hypey moment we're living? And uh, certainly, I think through the years, we've gone through, you know, you know kind of basic, getting basic knowledge of hydrogen up to more applications that were useful for us as humans, as a society. And certainly Zeppelin, I think everybody knows that, invention. And it came to a very rapid end because of an, a very, you know, uh, big explosion. And this idea of traveling through air lifted by hydrogen, which is very, very light compared to air, you know, it came to an abrupt end. So safety is so important because we're talking a lot of hydrogen and you will see some interesting facts here as well, but we need to make sure that we have also a very safe use of this very promising and very dangerous substance at the same time. So we can say the future is meant to be greener, at least greener. And um, there is one organization which is very interesting. That's called the Hydrogen Council, which, which was founded only for about six years ago. And it is a very important and large group of companies, stakeholders at the highest levels that have wrapped their head around, you know, how to implement hydrogen in our economies. And it, you know, explores some very important aspects, how it can help to decarbonize societies and the economy. And very important, it is about stakeholders. We are here in a very, you know, tech intensive <laughs> environment, but our end users are going to be you, you, us here in the room. So the question is, is going to be, is, is, is this century going to be the hydrogen century? Well, if you read the newspapers, you might think so. Um, but hydrogen, we must understand, is produced in a, in a variety of ways. Currently, it is made out of fossil fuels, so it is not green. It's not any better than natural gas, because we're producing it mostly out of natural gas by a process called um, uh, methane um, steam reforming. So please be aware, hydrogen is not equal green. Only green hydrogen is, you know, CO2 positive, so or neutral at least. So for that reason, we start our journey with looking at the sources of energy, how we're going to produce hydrogen, and that these should be renewable energy sources. And then we go along, you know, the whole, I would say value chain at a very high level, where we need to distribute the hydrogen that is produced. We need this also as a buffer for our um, energy system. You must understand that if you deal with renewables, you can't control the wind, you can't control the, the, the sun, you can't control the waves, you know? So we must be aware that we need to fill in the gaps. So any access of energy can be transformed to hydrogen um, and then, you know, can be fed back to the energy system as well. But then the interesting part comes here. 
the end users. Today, it is a substance used very much in the industrial setting, businesses, the chemical businesses, for example. Um, one of the main changes is that it's going to impact on our lives. If you look at, for example, buildings, you know, heating for buildings, your houses, our offices, that's a game changer. And then again, safety should come first, even with this transport. You know, if you look at this in a very blunt way, if you start seeing lorries, you know, trains, uh, personal cars driving on hydrogen, these are potential, well, bombs. <laughs> Don't take it too seriously, but it is the case. Nowadays, uh, we have maybe other fuels, but the point is that hydrogen is extremely flammable and explosive, and that makes a big difference. So we'll, we'll be coming back to the topic of safety during the whole presentation. Um, so what is the projected um, yeah, um, uh, implementation of hydrogen in the energy mix? If you look at this chart today, we have about you know 82% of um, our energy comes from fossil fossil fuel fossil energy sources, and by 2050, it's expected to be you know quite a different. This chart will be look will look very differently, and the impact of the renewables will have you know a dramatic increase by a factor of three to five times. Now. It is very hard to imagine that hydrogen will uh, replace fossil fuels anytime soon, but it will enter enter the system in a way that we may not completely understand today completely. But because there are two things, we want to exchange fossil fuels and we want to cope with the increase of energy demand. The population is growing. Look here. Hydrogen meets digitalization. So <laughs> anybody of you using ChatGPT? Well, you can imagine how much energy that is costing us. And we're just getting started. We, not, we have not even started with autonomous driving. And this will be energy, I would say, or at least very hungry, energy hungry processes in, back, in, in the background. So we are growing as a population globally we're you know getting more and more digital and the energy demand is going to rise yes or yes at the same time we want to become greener we want to do something about uh about uh, you know about yeah decarbonizing our economies about becoming more greener in fact now if you look at the hydrogen value chain and certainly not going to go through every single step but what I think should be very clear and hope that you take this message with you is that the value chain is going to be so complex because nowadays take any chemical company or refinery the value chain is already there but it is very narrow very steep and very narrow it doesn't touch us as citizens if something happens if, if there is an explosion we read it in the newspaper but it's not going to be your neighbor that's for sure, right? So what happens with this value chain is that if you look at every point where hydrogen is moved from one place to the other, from one process step to the other, from one vertical to the other, there's some risks involved with it. Um, so we can also take a very concrete example. Look at the natural gas grid. Um, huge amounts of uh, natural gas being transported through pipelines. Customers in that sector are planning to mix it with hydrogen. Some are already thinking of and planning to build uh, grids or pipelines to transport pure hydrogen. And this will have a big impact on many things, on the equipment that is used to measure all kinds of param parameters, it will have a huge impact on safety aspects, also related to that, because um, hydrogen is, tends to be very corrosive uh, for metals, for example. So just a very small example, how much hydrogen and the implementation of hydrogen will impact only this small 
example, or in this small, small example, not to think about what's going to happen here with transport. We're going to travel by train, you know, fueled by hydrogen. It's going to be a different story, you know? So um, the key message here is complexity will increase. And not only complexity will increase, it is a market. And there's tons of money to be made by all the players who are seeing in this a business opportunity. So with a with an average growth rate of almost 55% until 2032, uh, this is an exponential growth. We're not talking linear. We're here at the very beginnings, where it seems to be a bit linear. But if you look at you know the end of this decade, uh, early next decade it's going to be really a, a very big game changer where the largest market is Europe, the fastest growing market is Asia Pacific. And this has a big impact. And you know on what? On where the consumers of hydrogen will be and where the producers of hydrogen will be. And this picture blew my mind because we, can't, we tend to see our own country, you know, and I'll... The, yeah, all, all the stakeholders working on this, and suddenly you start to think, hey, wait, in Germany, we can't produce enough hydrogen for our own national needs. We will need to import it. For which countries? Well, this map, map shows very nicely where there's an excess of hydrogen produced and where there is a higher demand than what you know the nations themselves can produce. And all Europe, all Asia Pacific, which are economically extremely strong areas, are going to need to import hydrogen. So apart from the measurement equipment and technologies, this is going to create globally new uh, trading trade routes, shipping, you know, piping hydrogen from A to B. And again, if you remember the value chain at every touch point, there's going to be a risk involved. And there's going to be a risk involved because it is a very explosive substance. And we can say we are pretty good at it because certainly the industry has been working for decades on hydrogen. It has built huge infrastructures. It has built very solid you know, um, value chains even though the hydrogen is produced from fossil fuels. That doesn't matter. We now are looking at hydrogen as a component with uh, some associated risks. And um, it is here where we need to be aware that this, again, narrow focus is going to be broadened yeah, exponentially. So we are going to be impacted by this new uh, energy reality, if you want, right? And for that reason, what we don't want as a society is this kind of things. Air transport based on hydrogen came to an end, came to an abrupt end because of one explosion. People were afraid of hydrogen afterwards. It was not sellable. With all the marketing efforts in the world, it was not sellable. And for those who live in Germany or, or are aware of it, who does remember what triggered the end of the nuclear area in this country? It was also an explosion. And that hits people very deep. And once people are afraid, it's really hard you know, to overcome that because these are really strong emotions, so to say. And that's what we, what we don't want, of course, you know, because we're building a greener future also on hydrogen's back. So we need to make sure that it is going to be safe, safe for everybody, right? Um, but there are some risks and uh, there are some really good studies that have been investigating where accidents tend to occur. And 70% of the accidents, known accidents, where the causes are known, occur due to human failure also, in relationship with uh, equipment failure as well. But we as humans are a risk. 
And if you remember this global map, how many people are working in the hydrogen, hydrogen industry today? And how many people will, we, will be working in this industry tomorrow? I don't know. If 100 today, maybe 10,000 tomorrow. And everybody is going to be playing a certain role in it. And if you look at some physical characteristics, for those who hopefully understand this, the ignition limits in air. So whether you have a very small percentage, percentage of hydrogen in the air or, or very high, so low being four, high being 75, it's going to be flammable. It's going to burn. With such a wide range, it's very different than if you compare to natural gas, methane. Between five and 50% volume concentration makes natural gas uh, dangerous, flammable, that can burn. This is a very narrow range. In your kitchen, you just open a window and it's okay. But with hydrogen, it's not the same. The other thing is that the ignition energy, the amount of energy needed to you know, to 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 uh, to make it uh, yeah ignite is extremely low compared to methane. It's about fifteen times lower. Electrostatic energy, a spark, one spark, and it says boom, boom. You know this kind of situation. So again, here we are coming to a point that we must understand that we need to deal with hydrogen in a very particular way and must be very careful in selecting equipment, whether it's measurement equipment, calibration equipment in our case, you must really be very well aware of the risks. I'm, I'm going to talk about risk because this is about risk management at the end of the day, right? Um, the other thing is we as humans, we, with our senses, are just not going to detect a hydrogen leak because it hasn't got a color, it doesn't smell, and we, we won't see it. And due to this diffusion coefficient in air, it moves very quickly through air. It diffuses very quickly. So if you would have a leak at this level, it will go up before you can detect it, and it will accumulate there. And due to all these characteristics like, you know, the ignition limits in air, it's going to be remain explosive, but you won't see it. That's, that's really crazy. So another thing that really blew my mind is that you don't see a hydrogen flame. What you see here is a rocket, a space shuttle, at full thrust, and you don't see the flame. What does it mean that a leakage in a pipe, in any plant installation, a burning you know, stream of hydrogen, you won't see it. And it burns at, you know, over 2000 degrees Celsius. So don't touch it, you know, but how can you touch things that you don't see? So it is really, really tricky. And you could say, well, why don't you mix some sort of odor into hydrogen, like the natural gas? Well, one of the reasons is that fuel cells need an extremely pure hydrogen mixing such chemicals we haven't been able to find a chemical that will still work in such a fuel cell so it must be extremely pure and that's one of one of the reasons why we don't mix it with something to at least smell it to detect it yeah so um maintenance and all those people involved in maintenance remember the value chain there's going to be maintenance in every vertical of the value chain in every role and the maintenance people are be going to be exposed to it. And we must, of course, be aware of that and protect those people because, you know, they're doing something good and we don't want their lives to end up bad. So, um, and for that reason, there's something called, you know, there's some regulation, there are some directives. And certainly the Artex directive is a very important one because it's this kind of, you know, yeah, directives that will ensure that we are at least aware of which equipment we can use in such explosive or potentially explosive areas. And what else, what I found is very interesting is that the IE, 
uh, see ex extended, you know, their their uh, their competence with one extra unit that addresses the basic knowledge of the safety of hydrogen systems. So it is now including the human into the equation. It's not only about equipment, you know, that should have some particular characteristics. No, it's also the human element, the human worker, the technician, the specialist that must be trained to deal with hydrogen in, a, in an appropriate way to make it safe. And I can't reiterate it enough here. Flammer range is very high. The ignition temperature uh, energy is very, very low. And for that reason, also hydrogen is subject to, at least in Europe here, this directive. Yeah. So, but talking about risks of a hydrogen leakage, where does it occur? And how can we categorize zones? Maybe you, some of you are aware of this, but there are practically, practically speaking, the three zones. The zone zero is a zone where you can expect always to be, to have some, some explosive potential because, you know, um, it's to, supposed to be an explosive atmosphere all the time or most of the time. Zone two, so, sorry, zone one is where you might expect some explosive, explosive atmosphere now and then. It's likely to occur, but not all, all the time. And zone two is the most secure one or the less, the less risky one. So you must be really aware where you are working and that there's also some sneaky transition. Because here, what, what could be a zone two? Maybe your car is zone two. I hope your car is going to be a zone two. <laughs> but things can go wrong. And before you know it, you are in zone zero. Accidents occur. It's not planned, but they tend to occur. And for that risk reason, this, this categorization, this classification is of primary importance to know where you're going to work. And here's where, of course, also measurement, measurement equipment and calibration become very relevant because we as humans can't detect hydrogen today. We need equipment to do that. We need to equipment to detect hydrogen in the atmosphere. But this requires calibration. Without calibration, how can you trust your measurement equipment? But then again, if your measurement equipment is fed by any power supply and it's not appropriate, it can make everything explode. So it's your worse off. So for that reason, we must be aware that we use the correct equipment, that we use calibrated equipment. And then of course you need um, calibrators that are uh, you know, hydrogen or fit for, for, the, for the job. And, um, and in that case, or in this case, uh, BMX is of course very much involved in this uh, industry and we do have such equipment. So, and there's one thing that also I would like to highlight is that gas transport companies, you know, there are, if you look at Germany, there are different pipeline networks and where one pipeline goes into the other, the different stakeholders need to, you know, pay the bill for the gas transported, you know? And for that reason, you need to measure directly at, at the source, at the pipe, how much quantities are being transported. Now, nowadays, these are natural gas pipelines mainly, but in the future, if you imagine having pure H2 pipelines, you just can't put any sensor there. You just can't put any equipment there because hydrogen is extremely corrosive. So it will, I wouldn't say it will burn through metal, but it will make it very, uh, yeah, something called embrittlement that, uh, that really can damage the, the, the structure of the metal and it can cause a leakage. And again, where it's, you know, we're <laughs> We're coming back to the same topic. You won't smell it, you won't know it, and you will notice it only when it, something goes terribly wrong, right? So just to give you an idea, so this is a calibrator that we uh, manufacture. Um, it is an intrinsically safe calibrator, which means that the electrical equipment is designed to limit really the energy to make it safe in explosive atmospheres. It is well, uh, suited for zone zero uh, um, uh, uh, atmospheres, environments, 
And for that reason, it's the most strict level. And also very important here is this one here, T4. It refers to the fact that the surface temperature of such an equipment will not exceed a certain temperature, in this case, 135 degrees. If you look at hydrogen, the ignition temperature or the out ignition temperature lies very much higher. And this is also very important because the out ignition temperature means that the hydrogen may explode with or without any ignition energy directly like you know a flame or something like that so we must be really careful with that and all the other you know i would say kind of bit complex uh, denominations um, show that this piece of equipment this calibrator can be used safely in the hydrogen environment yeah and this is also again very important because we must make sure that yeah that the measurement equipment you can look around here what everybody's selling uh, ask people the questions are your sensors h2 ready and so on this kind of stuff is going to be really 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 relevant so um yeah coming to to the end of my presentation here a few words about bmax uh we have also the pleasure here to have one of the owners in the room sitting founded in 75 uh, a very global company uh, 130 countries 12,000 customers and um, very much committed to quality and customer satisfaction and this slogan you can remember this slogan you know for a safer and less uncertain world we hope to pay contribution through our technology to the hydrogen economy of the future yeah thanks